Hi, I'm Javis Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use WordPress 4.2. My previous WordPress course is a few years old, so I thought it's time for an update. This is designed for people who've never used WordPress before and want to get started, or for people who've been away from WordPress for a few years and need a quick refresher. It's a series of little snippets about WordPress, so you can watch them all in one go if you like, or you can just uh, skip a few parts when you think, well, I know this part, you know, it's going to skip ahead. That's also fine. Um, this is not going to go into every single detail, so it's not for developers, this is for WordPress users. And uh, let's see what's covered. In this first video, I'm going to show you how WordPress works, what the principles are, how WordPress does what it does, how to log in. Uh, I have a particular way of working, you can amend this with your own way, of course, but I like to work a particular way and it's been it's proven very helpful over the years. I'm also going to show you how to use the integrated help system in WordPress. This is an aspect that's often forgotten, that actually if you have a question about any aspect of WordPress, there's help right at your fingertips. You just need to know where to look. And I'm also going to briefly cover updates. And that's just for this video. And all the other videos will be dealing with other particular aspects of WordPress. So how does it all work? How does what what is WordPress and why is it why is it doing how how is it you know and all these questions how does how does it actually happen what's happening under the hood? Well, WordPress is written in PHP. That's basically a giant PHP script. And as PHP scripts go, they are kind of dead in the water. They don't do anything until someone comes and visits your website. At that point, the starting point of that script is initiated and uh, lots of things happen over the hood. So every time someone does that, your website, your WordPress site, the front page as such, is built from scratch. And it's an interesting aspect and it's very different from static PHP sites or from uh, static HTML sites which exist before a visitor comes and then the static files are just served. So with WordPress, this website is generated on the fly every time a visitor comes. PHP is the script, but every text aspect that you put into WordPress, so a post with a headline or links or relationships between posts, they are all saved in a MySQL database. And that's on the web server, that's a different uh, kind of service that's running and that's being queried via the PHP scripts to extract text information or to save text. That is not stored as a file on the, on the server, that's all stored in the MySQL database. This way of serving files that's known as a LAMP stack is a very popular way of serving files on the web uh, PHP together with a MySQL database server. Uh, I've written a book about this if you want to know more about this technology. It's called LAMP stack for humans and you can get it on Amazon. WordPress itself has two entry points. One is the front page, so something like domain.com. This is what your visitors will see, and this is where they can read your blog posts and they can view your websites. So they may not necessarily know that it's WordPress that's working under the hood there. Then there's a second entry point, which is the admin interface. This is where you have to log in uh, with your own uh, credentials. You can, you can have multiple users on a WordPress installation, so you can have several administrators. You can even have users with uh, lower access credentials, so uh, people may not necessarily be able to create content, but they can subscribe, or people can create content, but they can't publish the content, only an admin can do that, and so forth. So, that's where you as the admin will spend a lot of time and your visitors will spend time on the front page. But you as the admin will also have to look at the front page to see how the changes that you've made in the admin interface affect the front page. The tools we use for this are WordPress 4.2. Uh, there's also minor updates, so it may be WordPress 4.2.2 or WordPress 4.2.3. I'm going to show you all this with a default theme called 2013. I'm doing this because WordPress behaves differently depending on what type of theme is activated, and each theme brings its own kind of tweaks and quirks and the 2013 theme is one that's pretty vanilla, pretty default, pretty straightforward so I can show you all the aspects that WordPress has to offer. 
I'm doing this in Safari on a Mac, but Safari on Windows or Chrome uh, or Firefox will work just as well. The only one that still has some issues is, of course, Internet Explorer. So if you use Internet Explorer, even on Windows 8.1, you will get a little warning inside the admin interface. So don't use Internet Explorer. With all that said, let's get started. Here we have the front page of a brand new vanilla WordPress 4.2 installation. You get there by just typing that domain into a browser. In my case, it's domain.com. And this is what your visitors will see. They can navigate around. These are posts here. If there are particular comments, it's mentioned. This is called a sidebar here on the left. But the way this looks is all governed by the theme. So depending what theme you choose, the layout of the front page will always be very different. Whereas the back end will always look the same. And the back end you get to by appending to your URL uh, forward slash followed by WP hyphen admin. Like that. And that'll get you to a screen, something like this. And now log in with your WordPress credentials. Either your WordPress host or you yourself would have given them when you've set up WordPress, when you've installed it. And this will get you to this. This is the admin interface and this shows currently the dashboard. Dashboard is kind of an overall thing that often shows you stuff you didn't really want to know about, but it's, it's kind of nice to go through it. So we, right now we see that we have uh, one post here, we have one page, we have one comment, and this is the version that we're running, and this is the theme we're running. All these little boxes here, you can uh, close them by clicking this little disclosure triangle here, and that'll minimize these boxes. If you really are not interested in WordPress news or you never want to see quick draft again, you can close this or you can even remove these things altogether. And if I just open them again, there's this thing here at the top, screen options. And if you click that, you get this little menu which will allow you to disable any of these things. So for example, the welcome screen. That's kind enough to have a dismiss button here. So if you click that, it will go away and you can also see that the tick box went away. If ever you want to see the welcome screen again, just tick it and this box comes back. Or untick it and this thing disappears. So WordPress news, goodbye. Likewise, quick draft. This allows you to quickly write a post with a title and some content, and then WordPress saves this as a draft for you to later work on. So it's not gonna publish anything here, but if you have a thought and you think, oh, I must write an article about X, Y, Z, this is kind of nice. You log in and you, you have the option straight there and then. You can also, and you can close this of course, you can move these boxes around. So if you think, well, quick draft would be much better for me if it was on the left-hand side, you can just click on this and then drag this over and then it pops right into place. Likewise, all these other things, you can drag them to the right or you can change the order just by drag and drop. I'm going to put this back to the default position here. And there's one other thing here next to screen options. This is the integrated help system in WordPress. It works a bit like the screen options. Just click it and this little menu comes down. And this is context sensitive. So depending on which part of WordPress you're in, in any of these areas, this will always change and give you a bit of information about what's going on on this particular screen and even a link to more help. So this is the online documentation. If you click that, a new tab opens and then you get the official WordPress documentation on this part of WordPress. So if you would be in posts, then this uh, would be completely different. Let's try that out. Posts, help, and now you get the overview about screen content, overview, available actions, bulk actions, and so forth. And you get a new link to a set of documentation online about posts. That's really handy. So if ever you're not clear about how I do this and that again, have a look at that. Let's head back to the dashboard for one minute and talk about updates. Updates are something that the WordPress team bring out and plugin and theme developers bring out on a regular basis whenever there's either a security hole that's been found or new features that have been added. And the dashboard will tell you about this right here. WordPress 4.2.2 is available. Please update now. We're currently running WordPress 4.2.1, so it's just a minor increase, probably a security patch that has been fixed. 
Usually the WordPress news feed here that I've just disabled, that'll tell you about what exactly has been fixed if you want to know about this. And the dashboard offers a convenient link to do this update. Uh, either click here, but the same link is available either from dashboard updates over here, or you can see this little two arrow icon at the top here, and that tells me that I currently have four updates. So either of these options will get us to this screen here, which will tell you all the updates that are available. So this here at the top, this is a WordPress core update. These are the actual WordPress files that are being updated. Uh, just underneath here, we have plugins. Currently all my plugins are up to date. That's you know, very handy to know. Then we have themes. So two of my themes seem to have an update available. And there's also new translations. So update translations. This isn't always obvious because even if you've updated everything and the update icon comes back, you think, well, what, what the hell is I going to update here? And it's the translations usually. And to update any of these things, either hit that update button to update this particular item. So in this case, the WordPress core. Or in case of themes and plugins, you can either select all or select them individually and hit update themes or hit update plugins. And then WordPress will go to work. It'll download the new files. It'll expand them so they come in as zip files. It'll remove the old files and it'll present you with brand new updated themes or plugins or translations or WordPress core files. Things about it for a second, and then there we go. This depends on how busy the server is, how quick the network traffic can get through to the server, and so forth. So be patient and you know just stay on that screen until this is done. And now you see we've updated our themes, and by the looks of it, the translations as well. But there's still an update here, so we'll go we can go back to the update screen and see, of course, that, hey, there's more translations and, of course, there's the WordPress core files. Now, about the core files, we can just hit the update button and that'll take care of that, but there's also something quite funky that's been introduced a couple of versions ago in WordPress. If a minor version has been released, so in our case, we're running WordPress 4.2.1 and WordPress 4.2.2 has come out, eventually, this will be updated automatically if we leave it alone major upgrade, so from WordPress 4.1 to 4.2, that won't happen automatically and you will have to click this button every once in a while. There are also managed WordPress hosting services available and they will do that for you. That's particularly helpful if you run a WordPress site that mainly has um, fixed content and you don't log in regularly and you may miss a few updates. If you leave that unattended for six months or so, then there's a big chance that your WordPress site will be hacked. Whereas when you always run the latest version, then that's very unlikely to happen. So if you need to update this manually, just hit that button here. And WordPress will think about it for a moment and uh, will give you a quick update and then come back with a brand new installed version of WordPress. If ever you see this window, this may or may not happen, usually it doesn't, uh, but I just thought I'd show you this in case the WordPress files have been updated and there is a database update that's required that WordPress for whatever reason couldn't quite carry out or couldn't quite finish with, then the next time you log in, this window will come up. And there's nothing to worry about, you just click that, your WordPress website will work fine regardless in the meantime, but the next time you want to write a post or log in, you should click this, and um, in fact, you have to click this. Just hit continue here, and that should get you back into the dashboard as usual. Notice that if I just head back to updates here one more time and then we're going to put this topic to bed. I promise you we're going to get on with real WordPress features here. If you are running the latest version of WordPress, you don't have the update button here. You have a reinstall button instead. So this is a feature where WordPress will do the update again and basically download a fresh set of files and install them again. This is Think about this a bit like refreshing your PC, the refresh option in Windows. That works a little bit like that. It's not going to affect your plugins or your themes or in fact your content. It's going to leave all that alone, but it'll reinstall the WordPress core files just in case you suspect there's something wrong with them or WordPress is behaving fishy. Most likely it's, uh, it's plugins that usually cause that. Um, but just in case you feel so inclined, you can also reinstall WordPress right from here. Enough with the updates already. So this is the admin interface uh, as a brief overview, but we haven't talked about the front page much. So you can go to your front page at any time uh, on the 
top left hand corner where it says your it has your site title here mine's test site you can either click on that or you can click visit site and then WordPress will switch over to the front page so you can see what's going on there and you have a few options here at the top from which you can conveniently create a new post which will take you back to the admin interface you can also see how many comments you've got waiting if you've got any updates here and on the right you can log out or edit your profile and you can see who you're logged in as and if you're really lucky you can see a funky picture here we'll talk more about that when we come to the users and credentials section of this course on the left hand side again where it says your site title you can return to any part of the admin interface for example the dashboard and you can switch back and forth at your leisure but I like to work in a way where I have two tabs open one features the admin interface and the other tab features the front page of my website and let me show you what I mean by that so hover over test site and just right click on visit site and select open link in a new tab and that opens a second tab which shows me the front page and the idea here is that I can make a change in the admin interface then head over to the front page refresh it and then see what and how that change has affected my front page let me demonstrate this with the site title here so my site's called test site it's even misspelled here and uh, I've got a tagline down here just another WordPress website but that's not necessarily what I want my site to be called so let's head over to the admin interface uh, scroll down to settings and find the general tab click it and the first two options here are the site title and the tagline so if you change that site title to something else that for example it'll update automatically here that's a nice new feature and the tagline could be anything like this scroll down to the bottom don't be scared about all these other options we're going to talk about that in more detail later and click save changes and as soon as you've done that WordPress has those changes saved and the front page will bring them in as soon as you refresh it because remember that's when your website actually gets rebuilt and if I do that now WordPress will show me my new site title and my new tagline and the same was true if I had written a new post or if I had changed my sidebar or in fact changed my layout the theme of my website that was it for the introduction. In the next video, we're going to cover how to select a theme on your WordPress website. Don't forget to watch all the other videos in this series. And if you have a question, leave a comment. I'm more than happy to answer that. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to share this with friends, family and total strangers. Bye for now. I will see you next time.